Taiwan. She is an associate research fellow, an adjunct associate professor, and the director of the Institute of Scholastic Philosophy of Fujian Catholic University in Taipei, Taiwan. She will share with us one of, his, of her expertise, life education in Taiwan. And after her lecture, we will hear a response from an equally esteemed speaker, our own Filipino Dr. Krishna Ray Palsis. Dr. Palsis is a faculty of the Philippine Normal University and he is currently serving as a faculty under the College of Graduate Studies and Teacher Education Research. So, without further ado, we give you two STEAM speakers, Dr. Professor Dr. Kathia Linehan and afterwards Dr. Krishna Ray Palsis. Dr. Kathia, please take it away. Okay. Hello, everyone. So I hope everybody can hear me properly. Okay. Uh, I'm very, very happy that the uh, uh, Philosophical uh, Association of uh, the Philippines uh, invite me to, uh, to this uh, webinar. And especially I have to say thank you, uh, Gina, for helping, uh, for organizing this uh, uh, webinar. Okay, uh, I, I'm, not I'm not sure because I cannot see all of you. That's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's normal. I cannot see, see you and, uh, but I guess uh, I, I will uh, use the PowerPoint. And uh, if you can see my, the share screen, I share this to everyone. So, uh, so today uh, our topic is life education in Taiwan, okay? Uh, so first uh, I would like to uh, talk about a brief history of life education in Taiwan, okay? Uh, first, uh, uh, the life education, the promotion uh, of life education in Taiwan actually started uh, around uh, 20 years ago. Uh, 20 years ago uh, uh, in Taiwan, we have a very high suicide rate, okay? And uh, life education is more like a, a reaction to this high rate because uh, the government realized that, okay, life education is very important because uh, 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 we have to deal with this uh, high rate, a uh, high suicide uh, rate problem. So uh, in this situation, the Ministry of Education started to uh, promote life education in Taiwan. That's about 20 years ago. Okay, then they quickly realized that, okay, the life education is not, what's not supposed to deal with this uh, uh, emergency situations only. They realized that, Life education is very important. It's very fundamental for the students' life. And if uh, we can give them a good life education, and that will benefit the students' you know, well-being you know, for their entire life. And uh, uh, when I teach the student, when uh, the student asks me why we should learn, you know, we should uh, take this uh, course of life education, you know, I always uh, uh, share them with a clip. So uh, uh, I will try to share this clip with you now. Uh, new sharing. Okay, well, while you're, Katya, while you're uh, preparing to share yes. the clip, please also make sure that you're yeah, I want to it's on so we can also yeah, see. I, I would like to share that. Uh, so I would like to show that clip. So Mm. Okay. Can you also turn on your 
video, please. Your camera on. Okay. So, I'm, um, okay. Can you see my screen now? Not yet. Oh, we can. Not yet. Okay. So can I play now yes. or can you see the screen? Is your is your camera also on? Can you turn on your camera? Yes, it's always on. Is it on? Because we can. Oh. yeah, it's always on. But uh, it looks. But I saw there's a uh, a band that uh, uh, the host banned me from showing my picture. I don't know why. There. Hey, can you see? Can see. see me now. Mm -hmm. You can see yeah. me. Okay, so can you see the uh, video? No, you have to you have to click share screen again, and go to the window that leads to okay. the video clip. I have to share screen. Oh. Okay. Hmm. I can't go back to the, I don't know how to go back to the, the web, uh, to the Zoom. I cannot see. Okay. So maybe, well, we just uh, continue. I don't think uh, that's uh, necessary to show that clip. Okay. So anyways, uh, that clip is just uh, uh, describing uh, a crab, you know, in a, a lot of fishes on the... In, in the food and the slowly... Uh, he, he was happily, somehow at the end, he fell into that shop shop. Okay, so it's cooked. Course. So life education is just uh, like that clip. So when the students see that clip, they realize that, oh, well, sometimes we realize that the direction is more important than the speed or than the, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Okay. okay. Yes, you can. So the, the direction is more, yeah, you can hear me, okay. Uh, the direction is more important than the speed and also so more important than the distance okay in our life especially it's like that okay you can have a, a slow speed no problem if you have the right direction that at the end you will get to the destination but if the wrong direction no matter how long and how hard you are working you will never get the, the destination so life education is just like that anchor Okay, the anchor in your life, so you know who you are, you know what human being is, and that you know what life is, and that you so you will you will always be on the right direction, and and the gradually, slowly, you will definitely get to the destination. So uh, that's why life uh, education is so important. It's not just like a discipline, like uh, literature or mathematics or social science or something, some discipline like that. You know, the discipline we learn knowledge, but all those knowledge should be used in our life to help us to to go on the right direction, and finally we can reach uh, the, the 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 destination okay, of our life. So, uh, so that's why life education is uh, so important. So, uh, um, so at present, life education course is uh, a compulsory credit. Okay, so in high school, so it means that all the high school students in Taiwan they have to take this, uh, take this uh, course. Life education. That's how important. How the government 
uh, emphasize on this uh, on, on life education. Uh, so, uh, but uh, it's only one it's only one credit. Okay, throughout the three throughout their three uh, years of high school, but uh, their uh, uh, in the elementary schools we have six years elementary school and also um, three years high school. Uh, so uh, during this period of time, uh, we will try to uh, uh, help the teachers to, to develop some uh, lesson plans. Uh, they will try to uh, combine the, the content of life, life education in, in their own perspective, uh, uh, sorry, in their own respective uh, disciplines. Okay. So uh, uh, they, are, they don't, uh, in the elementary and in the high school, uh, junior high school, they may not have the course called life education, but in the junior, a senior high school, we do have a, a compulsory credit in our uh, junior high school, oh, sorry, in our senior high school. Okay, so now I'm, I, I would like to talk about the, uh, a little about my job. So my, now uh, I'm working as uh, one of the consultant members in the uh, LEPDC. LEPDC, I will show you this LEPDC. LEPDC um, is a life education professional. Uh, yes? Yeah, yeah, can you see yeah. my, no, we cannot, you we see cannot my see. slide? No, please uh, share it again. So we can see your slide. I have to share it again. Oh, yes. Thank you. Share it again. For the rest, for the participants, uh, if you have questions, you may about the lecture. Uh, type in the questions in the chat box, and we will entertain the questions or feedback during the open forum later after the talk. Thank you. Somehow I cannot see how I, I cannot see that go uh, to Zoom. Yeah, I go to Zoom, but it doesn't work. Wait a minute. Where is that? Oh. Okay, how about uh, I, I have to uh, go to the Zoom, maybe through the link again, because uh, I just, uh, mm -hmm. no. I'm sharing. Oh, finally, I found it. Okay. All right. So can you see see yes. it properly now? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I going to introduce uh, some of my job. So it's a LEPDC Life Education Professional uh, Development Center. It is uh, uh, one center. It's a center in the uh, 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 Ministry of Education in Taiwan. Okay. So this is very is helping uh, to uh, train all the teachers to develop le their lesson plans and uh, to train to, to help them to understand what the education life education is and uh, to help them to build up the learning group because we find out that uh, the learning groups are, are very important because uh, the principles in the, of the elementary school for, for example the principles uh, uh, maybe this principal knows a lot about uh, life education so he, he he is able to do a good job uh, on life education in the school but uh, you know the principals will go to different schools so once this principal you know left then the, everything is gone the, uh, after how many years the ministry uh, the center realized that oh that it's not working if we can uh, build up these learning groups to gather all the teachers who are willing to dedicate to life education. Uh, if we cannot gather them together uh, in a formal learning group, and this kind of situation will happen again and again. So we focus on a lot on helping all the different schools to build up their own learning groups. 
Okay, and also I joined this uh, the live education program of uh, uh, National Taiwan University because what I talk about, what I just mentioned, uh, the live education in the uh, uh, elementary school and the high school, right? But we haven't talked about the uh, life education in higher education in Taiwan. Okay, so higher education is also important. But this uh, promotion of life education in higher education just starts only maybe uh, uh, two years ago. Okay, so it's kind of uh, relatively uh, late that uh, uh, our Ministry of Education realized that uh, the higher higher education in life education is also important. In higher education, so I also joined the program uh, to to try to build a, a life education curriculum in different uh, uh, Taiwan's universities. Okay, so that's um, um, about the, uh, what I'm doing now. So now I want to talk about. I want to put our uh, emphasize em emphasis on the core competences and or literacy that we want to want the students to. Possess. Okay, so this five competencies or literacy that is uh, written in our uh, syllabus. Okay, uh, so first uh, I'm going to talk about the thinking literacy, then the anthropology, then ultimate concern, and the value speculation and the uh, spiritual cultivation. So there actually is a completely a, a, a very uh, holistic picture of of life. Okay, so this what life education should include. Okay, so this is all written on our uh, in the uh, syllabus. Okay, so uh, I want to talk about the thinking literacy. Thinking this literacy is treated as um, in uh, as a, a methodology because we have this five different subjects. Okay, but, but no matter which subject, we, we, we need to think properly, okay? So we need to think properly to solve the problems, to face our life, to think properly to, to pursue the values in our life. So, so this is the methodology, which is throughout the whole uh, discipline, okay? So, uh, uh, hey, sorry, this is thinking. I think, uh, what is, okay, sorry, I think uh, I'm, uh, I make this uh, uh, PPT uh, quickly, so I think I made a little uh, mistake, but so just uh, listen to, to me, okay, what, uh, what's the thinking literacy? For example, uh, thinking literacy, uh, we emphasize uh, logic, of course, we have to think logically, right? But uh, in life education, logic is not the, the, the most important thing. Why? Because we also need the proper affections and the proper attitude to think properly. So if you, uh, we must have experienced a lot of uh, 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 situations. When we don't have proper attitude, we cannot think properly, okay? Or we have a different uh, affections or when our emotions are, 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 uh, are not, uh, for example, our emotions are too, uh, when we are too emotional, we cannot think properly either. So live education emphasizes that logic is important, but mere logic is not enough, okay? We also need the proper attitude, okay? Uh, for example, like a prejudice, okay, prejudice. Uh, prejudice in our life always affects uh, the, the, our, you know, our thinking of everything. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we, we also have, for example, we have experiences that uh, uh, one young person uh, in, uh, uh, in the bus, and uh, he, this young guy uh, saw uh, an old uh, elderly person, and uh, he was not willing to give the seat to this elderly person. So I saw that once, and I saw that, that situation twice. Then I started to conclude it. Uh, I started to conclude that okay, now all the young people are not willing to give their seats to the elderly people. Okay, so it's only couple uh, small experiences, but I conclude uh, 
I, I made the conclusion that you know, all the young people are like this. And that we made this kind of uh, uh, mistakes all the time in our life, but we are not aware of that. Okay, in, for example, like this. So the thing, uh, thinking literacy is so important. So when we try to judge this, uh, uh, judge uh, the, the situation, you know, try to say, oh, this young, young guy uh, is doing something wrong, when we are trying to judge him, okay, we always base it on our pre uh, judgment, okay, and the, and the worst thing is uh, the student is not sensitive, it's not aware of their prejudice. So this uh, thinking, uh, thinking literacy is that's why it's so important. So in every uh, later on, we'll realize that uh, uh, in uh, anthropology and also in uh, ultimate concerns, bio speculation and uh, uh, spiritual cultivation in every part of this discipline, we will use this thinking. Uh, Literacy, uh, literacy. Okay. So the second one is the anthropology. So I will put more uh, time on this uh, topic. Why? Because the anthropology is something that is, uh, is my specialty. Okay. So uh, my approach is uh, philosophical, but uh, uh, we also accept a different uh, uh, approach, such as uh, uh, natural sciences. Okay. That's also important. Uh, so, um, so what is human nature? So anthropology, we have to answer this question, what is human nature? Because in Taiwan, it's a, it's a multiple cultures. There are multiple cultures in Taiwan. So uh, when we uh, try to introduce uh, anthropology uh, to students, we have to use different approaches. So uh, not only uh, Chinese philosophy, okay, but also Western philosophy, but also nature science. But in Taiwan, uh, we find out a, a very interesting uh, Phenomena. I don't know about uh, uh, the Philippines. Maybe you have this uh, problem too. But Taiwanese uh, uh, students, they kind of uh, worship nature sciences. Okay, so everything you know, if uh, it can be proven by the nature sciences, they think of it the, 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 the only truth. That's very true. So the other thing, they they don't care. Okay, they don't think that something true. They don't. They don't think in a different way, okay? But the, the uh, nature sciences, uh, don't get me wrong, I think nature sciences are very important, but uh, we, we have to let the student understand that nature, nature sciences is not the only way how we understand human beings. So that's very important, okay? So they have to broaden uh, their understanding of human being. They have to realize human being is a very, uh, a very, complicated idea that we cannot use, we cannot simplify this. Uh, okay, if we simplify the, the nature of human being, so at the end, the, our understanding of human being is very narrow and uh, we may make the wrong decision uh, in our lifetime, you know, in, our, in our lives. So that, uh, sometimes that uh, decision can be crucial, okay? Uh, so let's uh, see. Uh, for example, I, uh, in the class, I will introduce uh, the uh, uh, Aristotle's uh, statement because Aristotle states that uh, the human being has a rational principle. Okay, so it means man is a rational animal. So that's the definition, and uh, we can see the Mencius. Okay, Mencius uh, is uh, the one important figure just to follow. Uh, Confucian, okay. The mention said that the feeling of concern for the well-being of others is the humanness, and the sense of the shame and the disgust is the fairness, and the sense of uh, uh, treat others with uh, uh, courtesy and the respect is the uh, propriety, and the sense of right and wrong is wisdom, humanness, uh, fairness, uh, prop uh, propriety, propriety, and uh, wisdom are not melded into us from the outside, which means there are something within us, that's our nature. But we can see that in the Chinese uh, philosophy, it's so clear. Chinese people think, how they think about the human being. They, they think that they regard human being as a moral, the moral values. Okay? We should respect other people. We should have a humanness. We should uh, 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 
have this, but this is a moral, moral subject. That's how Chinese people see, uh, see human beings. And also, we have this, uh, uh, I use the uh, Catholic philosopher uh, from France, Jacques Mahidan, okay? Uh, Jacques Mahidan said that a human being is a person, okay? So man must accomplish through his own will what is sketched in his nature. So something is sketched in our nature and we should use our will through our will we should uh, try to develop this uh, powers in us, you know, to perfect our power powers, including our intelligence, including our will. We try to perfect these powers until we we become a person, until we perfectly use these powers. Okay, so this is a person who has good uh, inclinations in us, but we have to develop it. So person in, in a Chinese in Chinese we don't have other way to express this word. We always call it Ren. So Ren is just like a, a regular, you know, just like a uh, can be a, a it's hard to explain. So so a person for us, we, we don't understand that person is the image of God. Okay. So we don't have this idea that a person is something with dignity. Okay. So but why we think a human being has dignity? It's like the nature said. Because human being has this uh, the, the 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 moral value in in the human being. The human being can do a, a moral uh, behaviors, moral judgment. So that's why human being has dignity. So after I introduce all these uh, uh, different approaches, I always ask my students, you know, what, which one, which statement is right, you know? So whose statement is right? So if I ask all of you, so what's your answer? What's your answer? So then uh, actually students are, are wiser than we expect. They always tell me that they are all right, okay? Human being is not only a moral subject, and a human being is also a subject who has this powers, uh, not only intelligence, but also the good will, okay? So, uh, so because of that, we have this uh, invul invulnerable dignity because human being has this moral bias, human being has this uh, um, powers, the, the, the important powers like a will and like a intelligence. So human being has this inviolable dignity, okay? So, you know, this webinar is also about the, the, the pandemic, right? So uh, when we, uh, I remember I saw a news uh, if I, I remember it right, uh, that should be the news from Italy. There was a, a doctor who said that he didn't know what to do uh, because uh, it, uh, there are two uh, two people who got the COVID-19 and the first one uh, is elderly one. The elderly one uh, maybe passed the 30, uh, sorry, it's over 60 years old. And this elderly one came first to the hospital. And the young young one came later, but somehow he has only uh, one breathing machine, right? So he, what can he do? He should give this uh, breathing machine to the elderly one, or he should give this breathing machine to the younger one, okay? Uh, that's really a dilemma, right? So this is lose-lose situation. It's not win-win situation, it's lose-lose situation. So why he has this, uh, uh, what kind of a situation, uh, what kind of a decision that you can make? It's all based on his understanding of human being and understanding of human being and his dignity, okay? So in the extreme situations, the judgment will depend on our understanding of, of human dignity and the essence of human being. So that's why the anthropology is so important, okay? If he's the uh, utilitarian and, and he doesn't, has uh, any idea of the human dignity, he he will you know he would uh, you know definitely you know immediately made the decision and I should give the a breathing machine to the young young one because the young young person can survive uh, has a, a better chance to survive so he doesn't have a second thought but is that really the right thing to do the elderly people has no dignity the elderly people does not worth living okay. So this kind of dilemma is so 
it's so important that we realize how important that we have to form properly our understanding of human being and disability. Okay, so uh, that's uh, uh, the about the anthropology. I don't know how much time how, how much time do I have now. So Gina, should I continue? Gina is here. Yes. Okay. Anyways, uh, if no, should I continue? It's okay, right? Yeah, because I don't know how much time. Uh, you give me another ten minutes or five minutes. Sure, sure. It's fine. Okay. So now uh, I would like to talk the third subject, the third part of the uh, life education is ultimate concern. This ultimate concern is in line with the question, you know, why should we live? Okay. Why or what I am I living for? Okay, the ultimate concern. So uh, we will try to introduce the student that uh, let them pay attention to their their they their own in, in their own they have a, a transcendental dimension of human nature because they want to trend, uh, they want to uh, trans transcend themselves to become a better self. You know, we'll try to uh, you know wake up you know the, the 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 awareness of their transcendental part. Okay, this is so important. So we will try to help them to think the finite from the finite to the infinite. Uh, infinite is so important. Uh, so uh, the the in the ultimate concern usually we'll ask the student you know uh, can the ultimate concern help you to find uh, the meaning of life. So in this uh, part of life education, we usually introduce religious wisdom, okay, religious wisdom. Uh, why? Because uh, uh, the religious wisdoms usually offer us an answer that why our life is meaningful, okay? So uh, in this situation, we will also uh, reject a kind of a pure materialism, okay? Because uh, the pure materialism, uh, People may just think that you know, uh, human beings are nothing but the workings of the nerve system. Okay, if so, then it's hard to talk about the meaning of life, isn't it? Right? If we only think that we're the workings of our nerves, then what, why, where, where are we here? Where we want to learning? Where we, where we want to learn? Where we want to know about our life and want to know the meaning of our life? that everything will become meaningless, okay? So in this situation, we will reject a, a mere materialism, a materialistic uh, uh, perspective, okay? So uh, the ultimate concern that it, we will, in this, uh, in this part, we will introduce different uh, religious wisdom. So in Taiwan, uh, uh, there are some parents, they are very paranoid about the schools, uh, the, uh, the school teach the, in the, the schooling uh, that uh, the student, uh, the teachers say something about uh, religion. Uh, they are very afraid that uh, the teacher will preach, you know, in the class. But actually, uh, this kind of uh, situation uh, uh, makes them reject all kinds of uh, religious wisdom. But but we have to know that religious wisdoms are very important. It's because this is our important heritage, heritage, generations from generations. There are a lot of wisdoms inside. We will never preach in the class. We will never preach to the student, you, know, you should believe this uh, uh, religion, okay? otherwise you will go to the hell. We never do that. We just introduce them different traditions, the Buddhism, uh, Catholic, uh, Catholicism, and uh, we also introduce, uh, sometimes we introduce Hinduism, we show them that you know, in other countries they have their own wisdom. Okay, also Taoism. You know, that's the traditional Chinese uh, uh, religious religions, right? So we show them different way, different wisdom, to help them to find, to help them to pursue the the, the ultimate concern, the ultimate thing that they really cares about. That they, that they can be the base for their their life. Okay, so we use the religious approach. We use uh, approach. We use the philosophical approach. We also use the scientific approach. Yes, that we we cannot treat the the human being 
we cannot regard human being only as the nervous system, okay, the workings of nervous system. But the nervous, the workings of the nervous system, they do help us to understand human being, you know, because we have this material part. We also have to understand the the material part of of uh, of our workings, right? So this is also uh, valuable, important. We, we are not trying to exclude the scientific approach, so we try to put it all together to give them a more uh, broadened, a more broad picture and a more a holistic picture of uh, uh, of the ultimate concern that you know what kind of ultimate concern that we have. We can have. And we also reject the. Uh, uh, we have a rejection of uh, uh, nihilism, okay, in the ultimate concern, because uh, uh, nihilism is, uh, uh, you know, if you believe in nihilism, then no, there's, we, there's no reason that we're talking about life education anymore, okay. So that's why the ultimate concern is so important. So at the end, you know, maybe it, it doesn't have to be a personal God, but the ultimate truth in the universe, that can be your, that they can be your, your the goal of your life. If you pursue truth for your whole life, that's fine. You have to find something valuable. Okay. We reject any kind of uh, uh, nihilism. Okay. So uh, that's about the, the ultimate concern. If, uh, this is a very difficult uh, topic. So if we, you have any questions, we can discuss that later. And then we have also the uh, value, spec, uh, value speculation. Because uh, 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 just uh, uh, one hour ago, I discussed with uh, Professor Houses, uh, uh, right? He, he said that in the Philippines, uh, uh, you have uh, value, uh, value education, which I think is so nice, right? The value education is so important. And in the value uh, speculation, we ask the students, okay, we ask the students, uh, you know, value is subjective or objective. You know, if I ask you, can you answer me that question? This question is so basic, but uh, no one, you know, can immediately give me a right answer. Okay, value is subjective or objective. You know, young, young people, they can just uh, make a, a quick conclusion that the value is subjective. Because I think, for example, I think that to, to, to get a champion is very important. I think it is it's valuable, okay? But the other one say, oh, I don't think the champion is is something important. I think, uh, you know, we should, uh, uh, the, the balance of life is more important. We should not, uh, you know, sacrifice our uh, balance of life to, to, in order to uh, to get a champion or something like that. So, so, so in this situation, people can just uh, make a quick conclusion that value is subjective. No, we have to tell the student that, you know, value is something if in, in between the subject and the object. That's what the value is, okay? So the fact is still there, okay? Health is the value. And we think health is valuable. Health is important, okay? Especially in the pandemic, we realize that health is so important, right? So health is the value. So the health, that's a fact, okay? So the truth, the goodness, the beauty, they are all objective. Okay, we cannot uh, conclude, make a conclusion that, that all the value is subjective. In this way, you no know, people will just have a arbitrary life. You know, you will just do whatever you want, whatever you like. That's not right. Okay, there's all oh, there was there are always good values. There are some objective parts of uh, values, the good values that worth pursuing. Okay, we should give the students this kind of understanding. Okay. And uh, there are different kinds of value. Value has, we have health, justice, and harmony, and we'll help them to, you know, to think through, you know, how to handle the difficult situation. For example, when you have the value conflict, what should you, what you, what should you do, okay? So for example, the harmon harmonious relationship, okay? That's the value, right? That's a good thing, okay? But self-esteem, that's also something good, okay? When these two values conflict one another, what should you do? Because uh, some, uh, in a class, you know, some uh, some students uh, insult uh, insult you or they they bully you or something. But you but you still want to be friends with them. So 
So you try to keep this harmonious relationship. But you know, in this kind of situation, you may lose your self-esteem. So what can you do? So in this situation, what uh, you need the uh, bio speculation, right? To solve the all kinds of problems in your life. So we have to think properly. So it's related to uh, the literacy, uh, the thinking literacy, and that we, we can use the proper thinking way in this uh, uh, value speculation, okay? And in value speculation, the most important thing is the moral value, okay? So how to make a proper moral judgment? Now we help students to make a proper moral judgment. We make them to understand there are different uh, uh, categories. For example, uh, people have a good motive, but it doesn't mean that people can do good things or their behavior can be good. But some people, they have bad motive, but somehow, accidentally, he do something right. It benefits a lot of people, okay, for example. So, so the behavior is right, but the bad motive is this. Then, then we can say that the, uh, this person is moral. Can we say that? Or if this good motive, uh, and, uh, and or only when the person has good motive and a good action plan. This two, when these two are combined, then we can say this is a, a moral behavior. So this kind of uh, uh, speculation, we should introduce students to think you know, properly. We have to help them to think in details, help them to, to clarify you know, the, the, the very uh, difficult situation. Okay, that's the value speculation. Okay, so spiritual uh, cultivation. So the, the, the spiritual cultivation is um, uh, uh, a bit hard to talk about the spiritual cultivation here. Uh, 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 so Gina, are you talking? Yeah. Hello? Oh. I just uh, hear something strange. So anyways, okay. Uh, so I'll continue. Uh, the spiritual cultivation. Uh, um, we try to help the students to, to, to realize the importance of the unity of knowledge and action. We all know about, we know the knowledge, you know, just like I introduced the life education, so we know the knowledge, but we have to lead like a person, right? So how to become a person, that's something so important. What kind of uh, actions we should, uh, we should uh, uh, do so that I can, you know, live like a person, okay? So not only I know how to, what person is, but I have to act like a person. So this two has to combine together. And uh, because this part is so hard to, uh, to illustrate. So uh, we just uh, gave some rules to help the students that, that they can just follow those rules to practice in their life. For example, we, uh, we see God, see Buddha and the same person in everyone. Okay, in everyone, they have the personal, they have the, in their person is the dignity that we should respect. And uh, the second the rule is like uh, to be the first to love, be the first to give, something like you just practice, okay? Practice. And uh, to give people confidence, give people joy, give uh, people hope, give people uh, convenience, okay? Uh, we'll, we should, you should postpone your anger, to be sensitive to uh, forgiveness. Okay, you should try to forgive people and uh, have the courage to apologize. Something like it's practice and practice to help them to do the spiritual uh, uh, cultivation. Okay, so I think, uh, I hope my, uh, my talk is not too heavy, <laughs> but that's, that's uh, uh, what we have. Uh, we have to, uh, the, the, all the ideas that we try to convey to the students uh, in Taiwan about life education. So that's it. I think, uh, oh, oh, there are more rules. I think I will just skip this part. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much. So, okay. Thank you, Katya. Maybe we wish. Okay. Thank you. We now listen to Dr. Ray. Okay. So, this reaction to the talk piece. Dr. Palses, go ahead. Okay, uh, so good okay. afternoon, uh, everyone. Hi again, uh, Professor Katya. Again, I am so happy to be part and to be the one to initially react 
on your uh, lecture. So I think this timely as well that I was chosen by the PAP to react because as you, everyone uh, should already know, is that life education is a, is a implemented curriculum and is compulsory in Taiwan. And I have compared it earlier to values education here in the Philippines. And I am very happy to see, uh, particularly in some of the slides that you've shared with us, that like the Philippines, we are, Taiwan is trying to merge uh, knowledge and action, that it is not sufficient to produce, you know, a skilled individuals or capable individuals, but we must also produce among our learners moral individuals. And I think that it's a fused horizon that the Filipino system of education and the Taiwan system of education have in common. So uh, I'm, I'm again, uh, I've already expressed earlier as well, and I'd like everyone to hear that uh, right now, the talk of or the lecture of, uh, of uh, Professor Katya is very timely because uh, recently earlier this year, the Philippine Senate has approved uh, some uh, kind of reinforcement as well as a review of the values education curriculum here in the Philippines. And that's an opportunity for teachers as well as philosophy majors like me and like Professor Katya and like everyone in this, in this, uh, in this uh, conference to participate and to give our input to this uh, reformation of, of values education in the Philippines, which I think we can learn a lot from the life education being implemented quite successfully in Taiwan. And so my questions are geared about uh, uh, gathering knowledge from Taiwan's experiences, perhaps good experiences, and as well as uh, uh, challenging experiences. I'm sure as educators, we all understand that implementing curriculum is uh, very, very difficult. And part of what the lecture has uh, discussed are the parents' worries, uh, par paranoia, you know, uh, reactions, and and we also have those concerns here in the Philippines. So, uh, my 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 first observation that I'd like to share, which uh, will be a part of the question that I will also raise, is that when you were showing your last, I think maybe that's the last or the second to the last slide, Professor, you uh, displayed uh, giving hope, giving confidence giving joy and these are all uh, uh, staple parts of the curriculum of life education if i am not mistaken uh, but i also know since i have also mentioned earlier that i was uh, the consultant of fo guang shan which is uh, in the philippines which is a huge religious buddhist movement in in taiwan i also know that 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 bullet you just showed me it's actually word by word a Buddhist teaching of Master Xing Yun, the founder of Fo Guang Shan. So my first concern is how uh, did you manage to uh, you know to to life education curriculum which has very obvious Buddhist, uh, let's say, manifestations, because uh, because uh, I imagine, of course, since life education is uh, is is implemented by the state, then it should be secular. However, one of the however uh, one uh, principles that you have just shared is actually very very Buddhist. So how did you get? How yes, did you manage? Should I answer you now, or yes, yes, you you may we may talk about it now. Thank you. Okay, okay. So exactly, this is from Po Guangshan. Okay, so this is not in the syllabus. Yes. Okay, this is not in the syllabus, but in our teacher education, oh. in the training of the teacher education, we give them this rule to help them to. Uh, to do the spiritual uh, cultivation because uh, sometimes they just ask you what is spiritual uh, spirituality okay 
So this is a very hard word to uh, give the definition. But when you do it, okay, when you practice, you will have your own understanding of the spiritual uh, cultivation. And uh, that is right. This, this is not in the syllabus, but in our uh, formal teacher training, we, uh, because they have to pass this training and get a certificate so that they can teach this uh, subject in the high school. So these teachers, they will have to practice these rules in their, you know, in their life. And exactly that one uh, give, uh, give uh, uh, people uh, hope, give people convenience. And th this uh, rule is from Fo Guangshan because we are welcome. We, are, we, we welcome all the uh, religious wisdom, okay, uh, in the life education. So that's, a that's also something very special about uh, life education in Taiwan because we are not, we are, we are not trying to you know, reject their uh, religious wisdom or tradition. We are welcoming them. So that's my answer, yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, actually, I agree with you, and I've witnessed that personally when I was in, in, in Taiwan, that uh, people are very open-minded, educators and, and you know regular people are very open-minded and they have diverse uh, uh, recognition of the different worldviews of Taiwan. Uh, however, I, I would assume that since you are working in a, in a Catholic university, mm. the, and of course your training is uh, more or less predominantly, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, Catholic, philosophy or or if if if, if you if you allow me to worried that that your life education curriculum which is supposed to be of course secular and fair has heavy buddhist influence okay. don't you think that that is uh, maybe an avenue for a review or for okay. uh, revision or or something like that yeah yeah thank you for asking me this yes. question yes. nice yeah um I myself is a Catholic, and I have to tell you that the, the syllabus, the person, the professor from NTU who wrote the syllabus, I I work with him now, and he is a Catholic too. Okay, so, uh, but uh, of course the syllabus has uh, absolutely the Catholic influence, but the professor, you know, I work with him, so I know him very well. He is welcoming different. Uh, religious tradition, okay, because uh, you know in the religious dialogue, religious dialogue, we have to, uh, as a Catholics, you know, I have to say that God can reveal Himself in a different way. I will never narrow down God. You know, God can only reveal uh, to people only in this way. But in different cultures, God has His own His own way to reveal to different people. Okay, so in in this kind of a mentality, okay, the, a Catholic can welcome, can embrace different traditions, different religious traditions. Okay, so we are happy to include the Buddhist rules in the uh, cultivation, in the spiritual cultivation. Uh, I I I am happy. I don't to know if that, that answer your question or not. <laughs> It, it does, and well, I, all I see, uh, well, most of, 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 of what your response is about is uh, something that I, I, I like, which is openness, of course, and uh, uh, inclusion. Mm -hmm. You're talking about inclusion of religious ideas. And um, so uh, I'm sure uh, perhaps other people in this conference would pick up on some of the statements from your response to my first inquiry. But I, I myself would like to move on to a second inquiry that uh, is quite independent of my first uh, uh, question. So uh, again, we are both educators and most of the people in this conference are educators. And one of the most controversial part of educating regarding morality is assessment. Uh, I think you already know what I'm trying to say here, but because for example, when you were when you were showing us that you know, uh, for when you were talking about the revelation of God and that yes, it does vary across culture, 
And there were also some contents in your slide when you said that uh, life education would reject nihilism, life education would reject uh, pure materialism, there, and, and it involves spiritual cultivation. Now, the, the question here is, and this could very well possibly happen, is what if a student has a personal conviction mm. Of, of, of maintaining a, a materialist stance uh, would, would, mm -hmm. and that reflects on his final output. What kind of assessment criteria have you set up so as not to discriminate uh, you know, uh, 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 these views that life education by default may not be to, uh, let's say, to Con con in consonance with. I hope I have made that yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, clear. Uh, I, I hope uh, I, okay. I, I, I understand you. I think you are asking that how about the, the student who end up, maybe when, when we talk about life education, discriminate this kind of the, the student like this, right? But actually, um, I myself, I have, uh, what we should do is to let the student know that there are different views of human beings, okay? There are different views of uh, human beings more complicated than than, than a mere, the, the, uh, one theory, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to imagine, one theory can explain human being completely. Is that right? I think everybody agrees with that. Right? Mm. So only one materialistic view, I think. If, if I ask you, can you believe that? It's probably kind of hard to believe mm. that, right? So what we can do is to broaden the uh, understanding. Uh, so the materialistic way of uh, to view the human being is over. I think nihilism is a more difficult to talk about because uh, you know some some students they, they just answer you that I, I don't believe in anything, but I still think life is meaningful. You know, I can eat a good food. Uh, I enjoy. You know, I can you know, enjoy food. I wear good clothes. Uh, yeah. I make a good, good money. And I think life is meaningful. Why do I have to, you know, pursue something else? Okay, that's even that's uh, this question is more difficult to answer. So, and uh, we often yes, in yes. Some <laughs> of the uh, students. Okay, we often mm. yeah. That's because it's hard to explain to them that uh, at the end. At the end, it's kind of very hard to, uh, yeah, we, 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 you, you say that I can, uh, I can enjoy myself, that's enough, okay? But uh, we will never, uh, I think no one can be confident, so confident that uh, in his whole entire life, he never feel lost, okay? He only enjoy those things. Mm -hmm. No food, 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 and clothes. No, food. Uh, mm. yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Sorry, as I was saying, Mark, and uh, when it comes to dealing with entertaining or discussing nihilism, and uh, perhaps a student who subscribes to that, it would be, of course, challenging. But again, I am happy to hear. That you uh you have the you still have the the attitude of openness to discuss those things, of course, mm -hmm. as part of, of life education, and not discriminate uh, students. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and right now I'd like to move forward to a related question, uh, which would be my third question. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, the best way to phrase this it it is to simply be. Uh, specific for example. So my question is, how do you grade spiritual cultivation? 
as a teacher? I mean, how would you assess that? I, I understand the Buddha has attained uh, spiritual cultivation according to the story, stay in place. Again, again this is one of the stories. Uh, in spite of the, the sun having traversed the sky. And that is, of course, a supernatural uh, feat. However, in, in academics and in a very, very, uh, uh, in, a, in Taiwan, which is, I think, compared to the Philippines, very strict when it comes to, to, to academic standards. How are you going to grade, again, I'm just repeating, how are you going to grade spiritual cultivation? Okay, so actually, uh, because we, uh, I just mentioned that I now I work with uh, the professor in NTU uh, who wrote the syllabus, right? And we are going to have, we're, we're, in this semester, we are going to have uh, uh, a course. Uh, it's called the, the uh, we just called it the, the, the uh, no. anyways, we have a course about the life education, okay? so. Uh, uh, we have this problem. How to give the students mark? Okay, how to assess them? Uh, in, in higher education, we already have this problem. Then think about in the 12 years compulsory education, the teachers they also have problem to to assess. You know if the students improve in their spirituality. Okay. So uh, that is why, that is why uh, in a, a compulsory uh, education, uh, no, they, they just, uh, uh, some, some people, and also in the higher education, they treat the, this credit, the compulsory credit of life education, they treat it like a easy credit because it's so hard to give the uh, evaluation of the students. So sometimes the teacher only you know, give, give them a kind of good mark. Okay, so in this way, they treat them, you know, not seriously enough. Okay, especially, you know, when you try to study literature and study mathematics, which will help you a lot to get into a good university, then why do you pay attention to, your, to the life education, right? So they just ignore it, you know, or they just, uh, uh, you know, write good paper to get a good mark, that's it. Okay, but they, do they really have the, this uh, spiritual cultivation? You know, I have to say it's very hard. You know, for the teacher to tell if they really have the, the spiritual uh, cultivation, but they, but uh, there are still some ways. For example, we ask them to keep a diary. Okay, how they practice this uh, rules. Okay, they keep a diary. The diary doesn't have to be long, but every day you keep a diary. And at the end, they give this diary to the teachers. So the teachers go through. The diary, and uh, if some if, if some students, if they really uh, in the class, if they really learn something or they reflect about their own life deeply, all of this will reflect in the diary, surely. Okay, so they cannot hide that. So if we ask them to keep the diary, we can uh, we can kind of in this way we can give them a, a kind of really. Uh, uh, we can give them a kind of more fair mark, okay. But that's still an issue, still kind of a, a homework we should give the, the students and uh, what kind of uh, uh, a homework that will really help them to in the uh, spiritual cultivation, you know, something like that. So uh, I, I, I don't have a, a absolute, you know, the, the yes or no answer. I don't have a, a great answer to this because this is something that we have to work on. We have to learn more different ways to evaluate the students and help them and give them a fair mark. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, at the beginning of the lecture, I was actually uh, seeing a lot of differences or actually assuming a lot of differences between life education and values education, uh, one in Taiwan, one in the Philippines. But hearing from you right now, today, I, I can see that 
we can actually have so many opportunities to work together on this, uh, in spite of, of course, yeah, our yeah, different yeah. cultural differences. Uh, in, in fact, the hardships that you have been mentioning, the paranoia of the of the, of the parents, and of course, this uh, this challenging uh, standards of assessment is actually one of the big questions as well here in values education in the Philippines. So I am really grateful to, to be part of your lecture and to react to you today, uh, Professor Katya. And as much as I'd really want to discuss more with you, uh, I, I believe that we have to give the floor, <laughs> I'm very share the floor yeah, to, uh, to the other members of, of the PAP. But I, I will be talking to you again, uh, one way or another, maybe perhaps through okay. Philippine Normal University. Thank you again, yeah. Professor. Thank you, Professor Thomas, and thank you, Dina. And uh, I, I don't have time to take a look of the, those questions yet. You know, I can, you know, I kind of old fashioned, I can only focus on one thing. <laughs> so I hope uh, <laughs> I have answered some of the questions from the audience. Yes, yes, okay. yes, Hi, Professor Kata, Kat, Kati. <clears throat> we have some uh, yeah. questions. I, I'm Charlie, I'm Good Charlie. Time. Yeah, we have some questions mm. in the chat box. If you mind to yeah. uh, answer some of them. Uh, one question here is, in a world uh, yeah. full of suffering and pain, how can life education mm. be of help? Mm. Suffering and a pen. Okay. So yes, uh, I think uh, suffering and a pen. Uh, how can the life education be help? Uh, it, it's very. I have to say this is uh, very helpful because uh, no matter you are in what kind of uh, uh, no matter you are rich or you are poor, no matter you are you are the president or you are the just the, you know, the regular people, you know, everybody will face suffering and pain, no matter what. Maybe in marriage life, maybe in the, you know, maybe the young students, they're worrying about if they can you know, get into a university or, you know, just, I just to talk about, we have this so much uh, high, uh, high suicide rate in Taiwan, maybe not as high as Japan or as Korea, but it's pretty high, okay? So everybody will encounter suffering and pain. So that's exactly why we want to uh, give the students life education, because uh, if uh, you really know what's the most important uh, in your life, then when you, when you make the hard decision, uh, you, you can uh, choose a better way and that you can make yourself feel better okay? because uh, you have so such a solid uh, beliefs and, and which are a good belief in your life. That will help you to uh, release the sufferings and the pain. But this, uh, this is not one day thing, okay? The life education, that's why we are doing the uh, life education in higher education now because 12 years is not enough and uh, only the uh, in the high school, they have only one uh, compulsory uh, uh, applicatory, yeah, uh, compulsory applicatory credit. So then in the higher education, we should continue this teaching. Why? Because that, that, that's, that's something that will benefit the students for their entire life. So sufferings and pains that uh, there's no way If get that uh, they face sufferings and pain, especially uh, so in either situation is is there there will be pain. Okay. There will be pain for that doctor forever. But uh, if you realize what's the most important the values in your life and uh, what human being is, then you make this decision, okay? And uh, you 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 will always try uh, with the best with the, the good motive and uh, try the best 
make the things better, then you can try your best. Then, you now, this kind of sufferings and pain can be released. I cannot say they can be removed. That's impossible. They can be released. Okay, and especially we should be uh, always make decisions on the right direction. Okay, okay, then then the, uh, this sufferings and pains will become a process for you to get the you know the, the real bliss in your life. So that's my answer. But uh, uh, this is a kind of hard to discuss because we don't have cases. But uh, uh, this uh, uh, sufferings and pain, you know, there's a we, we do believe that after you know, learning the life education, you know, learn something from the life education, we should have a better way to face that. Okay. Okay, thank you, Madam Katja. Uh, still, we thank have you. one question here. We have still one okay. question. How about the, how about the atheist? So they will not be ready for such kind of life education because uh, well uh, atheists don't believe uh, in God like that so they will not be having a spiritual sorry, how about, uh, how about who? Atheist, sorry, atheist you say how about artists the atheists yeah atheists artists. yeah Atheist, atheist, uh, uh, those people who don't believe in God like that. So, atheist, atheist, oh, the, oh, okay. Yeah, at, atheist, yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's a very nice, a very, very good question. Uh, because I just uh, had this discussion with the professor I mentioned, I work with now. Uh, we have, he, he, he said that, uh, you know, we should give the, the students, uh, when we talk about uh, the ultimate concern, right? Uh, we should give, give the student the idea uh, of the personal God, okay? Uh, so, my, my witness, so I, I'm, I'm fine with that. But that professor uh, who had an argument with me, he said that uh, uh, only personal God can be the, the can be the, the, the ultimate the ultimate reality. But uh, I, I I I told him that you know the ultimate truth or ultimate uh, beauty, ultimate goodness, maybe it's not personal, but some people they are, they, are, they they will pursue truth for his whole life. And it cannot be that the person's uh, ultimate concern cannot be something that the, the value that he pursued for his whole life. So actually, I'm open to 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 this uh, question. I will I, I will not say that uh, you know only the person of God can be the guide or, or only the, so so uh, even uh, I have to say even the uh, essays they don't believe in personal God. But then somehow they must believe that there are better values, values right, in our life, and find find out that better values, okay. And uh, if we try to think deeply, maybe the ultimate ultimate situation, the ultimate uh, level related to the, that person is not, okay. So the uh, atheists, atheists, they don't, they reject the personal God, but it doesn't mean that the all the atheists reject the, the, the ultimate values in their life. Okay, so that's uh, maybe one way that we can uh, give the uh, atheists, the students, a direction. Okay, a direction for them. So uh, there, even though there are some people who reject the personal God or they are atheists. But they can still have the good direction in their life. I will not. Uh, re I will not reject this kind of uh, possibility. I hope my uh, my answer. Uh, I hope I answered your question. But I think this is really uh, a very important question. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am Tatcha. Um, can we have one last question only? Um, okay, sure, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah we. Yeah, we are aware 
that uh, you know we we have uh, uh, religious discrimination. Uh -huh. uh, we have different religion, so we have, uh, I I suppose also there are uh, different kind of spirituality, and it is a fact that uh, religions discriminate each other. Um, well, uh, do you have some recommendations of a better dialogue among these uh, religions? So the question is uh, the, the dialogue of religions? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. You mean in life education, if there are some dialogues of uh, the religions? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yes, in life education, um, for example, in my class, I introduce them different uh, uh, religious uh, traditions. And uh, I draw out the common places of different religions. So because there are some good values shared in different religions, okay? So I always uh, uh, highlight this uh, common places for the students. You know, all, you know, even in different places, in different cultures, you know, somehow human beings find out that this uh, values is something worth us uh, pursue, to pursue, right? So we, I, hi I highlight this kind of common places. I, I use this way uh, to, to to open a, a kind of a religious a dialogue. But of course, uh, uh, if the, the student is smart enough, they may ask me, you know, uh, can we really uh, uh, talk about only the common places? Maybe there are still some, a lot of differences between different religions. That's also possible. You know, the, the, you know, for example, like in NTU, NTU is the best university in Taiwan, and the students are, you know, very smart. Okay, they can ask you this kind of question. So, so how can you open a dialogue? You know, uh, all the culture is heterogeneous. That all the religions can be heterogeneous. You know, every religion is heterogeneous. It means no, there's no comparison between them. Then how can we open the dialogue? So, uh, so when when they ask me this question, I will tell them that when you say that all the religions are so different, on, on what kind of base do you say they are different? Okay, so we always stand on a common place. Then we say, okay, they are different. Okay, so ask them to go back to that common place. I think that's a kind of a, a better way for them to find out uh, a more uh, constructive dialogue between religions. Okay, we try to, religions can help each other, not to destroy each other. Okay, so they will build up this kind of understanding that. You know, we should learn from other religions. If there are something good about them, we should learn from them. And that they should learn from us, too. If we have something good, we should share to others. You know, that's, uh, that's uh, my, my answer to, to the uh, religious dialogue. Okay. 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 Thank you, Professor. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you for so, faithfully answering all the questions. So, uh, may yeah, I, I think it's now. about the time, right? So we should. Mm. Yeah. May yeah. I now call we should say for... bye bye to the audience. Uh, uh, not yet, not yet. Uh, we, I, um, Dr. J. G. Joaquin, will uh, present you, award you the uh, certificate. Sir D. J. J. Oh, oh, <laughs> wow! Hi right here. Yes. Thank so, you. Hello. I'm uh, very glad. <laughs> on behalf I didn't of, expect this. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of the Philosophical Association. In the yeah, it's very sweet. Yes. We're presenting you uh -huh. this certificate of very appreciation. Sweet. Thank you. Okay, for sharing your insights with us as speakers for this third installment of the PAP webinar series. So, Dr. Katia, thank you very much for this one. So I'm awarding okay, it. Thank you all. Thank you all of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So before yeah. we end yep. Okay. This, bye -bye. yep. Before we end this uh, webinar, I just have to make some announcements for the PAP. Okay. Loading. Uh, 
Okay, so we have a scheduled uh, PAP oh. General Assembly this coming November 14. At least that's a tentative date. It's a, uh, it will be done by Zoom as well. So it's by, uh, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And there we will have a membership. So if you want to join that uh, General Assembly, please do, uh, do your membership duties diligently <laughs> okay and then we will also announce the winner of the Don Isabello de los Reyes prize on Filipino philosophy so this prize is for okay so this prize will be uh, for the a research program proposal on Filipino philosophy for the future and the grand prize will be 25,000 pesos. It's a starting research grant for you. We will also announce the winner of the PAP Public Intellectual Prize. So it's the inaugural prize for this one. Uh, from our donors, the friends of PAP, Jeremy De Chavez and Cesar Unson. And the prize will be 10,000 pesos for this one. Okay, so for those who will join the the PAPGA uh, will make the announcement in the Facebook group. Thanks very much and see you guys next time. Bye bye. Thank you for the salvation link. After an hour, we will close the link. Please uh, fill out the evaluation form to receive the certificate. Thank you, everyone, to our uh, uh, basic education teachers, graduate students, philosophy enthusiasts, Be professionals. Yes, thank you for your participation. Uh, for the members of the PAP board, please stay on because we will have a short meeting. Thank you. Hello. So, members of the PAP board, are you still here? Sir Charles, how are you? Doc Pa, welcome. All right, so I'm just removing people from the... Uh, still here. Veer is not here. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, Pao. How are you? Long time no see. Hello, hello. Okay lang. Uh, tega lang. Pinatanggal ko lang ibang tao. Is Katya still here? Sorry, Pao, I made a pin ko. <laughs> Pao, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. No, sorry. I made a pin ko. Okay, so welcome. 
I'll just put some people in the waiting room lang para. Masa na siya, no? Wait lang, ha? Do wala ba ako jeans? No, hindi naman. Teka lang ha. Hindi mo tao pa rin. Hello guys! Thank you for coming! We'll start the meeting in a while ha. Jean, si Kuya tayong host. Palabasin mo na lang muna yung ano, iba. Ako ba? Hindi. Oo nga. Na uh, wala ako din. Okay. Let's start pulling your recording.